to the Magic Awake Pages. This is Laura. Today we shall be protesting the calendar and how it thinks that it can tell us when to celebrate what and how long we're allowed to celebrate it. And there are the fact that they allow us to only celebrate for 24 hours once a year. I said we protest, people. We protest it. Don't let that calendar tell you what to do. If you want to do a St. Patrick's Day tag in the middle of April, do it. If you want to do a Christmas tag in the middle of July, do it. If you want to do a Thanksgiving tag in the middle of February, do it. Do it, guys. Get all those tags that you were tagged on on the wrong holidays and do them. Let's all make them. Let's do random Christmas ones and Thanksgiving and Fourth of July ones in the wrong season. This sounds like fun to me. And today, we are doing the St. Patrick's Day tag. The tag was created by Taylor from Book of Flicks Taylor. Yes. And I was tagged by Taylor from Book of Flicks Taylor. Yay! Look at me getting tagged by an original creator! That is a goal of mine. It has been a goal of mine. So, yay! Original creators! Alright guys, let's get ready. Here we go. Question number one, your favorite green book. I decided to pick a favorite green classic and a favorite green modern one. We're gonna go with the first one is, mm, mm, mm. I decided to go with Splintered by A.G. Howard. I love the creepy vibe of this one and it just really is one of the things that drew me to it. When it has a face on it, it has to be really well done for me to be like, And the second book that I chose was Sense and Sensibility, Barnes and Noble, Leather Bound Edition. It is the prettiest color of green I've ever seen. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. It's not illustrated though. Hmm. Question number two. Your favorite St. Patrick's Day themed book or movie? We are very, very short and low on supplies for St. Patrick's themed anything. So the first movie that cops into my mind is Luck of the Irish, which Taylor said, which is one of my childhood favorites. And for the books, I don't think there is any that I've read. I literally have to look and I don't own any. I'd have to research it. And that's too much work for a lazy person like me. So I decided to pick Leap Year. It is a romantic comedy and it doesn't have to do with St. Patrick's Day, but it does have to do with Leap Year and it happens in Ireland and it's just super, super adorable and funny and it's just, I love it. It's really fun and since it's not technically St. Patrick's Day, you could watch it any time of the year. So there. Don't forget we're protesting that. If you do find a St. Patrick's Day movie, watch it. Just because. Question number three. Corned beef and cabbage. Pick a book that made you feel hungry. And for this one, I'm going with the torturer of hunger themselves in their delicious description of food that makes you be like, what that? I want that. C.S. Lewis, the original food torture person. I can't tell you how many times I'm reading his book specifically the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and he's sitting there and he's describing the desserts and the bacon and the eggs, and I'm just sitting there and the fish, not, don't forget the fish, and I'm just sitting there, I'm like, you can't read this book when you're hungry. He goes into too much detail. He talks about the smell, the sound, the way it looked, and then he starts talking about the way it tastes. Question number four, Four Leaf Clover. A book that was a rare, or item, that was a rare, valuable find. And for this one I chose The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies Extended Edition DVD Collection Box Set that I got at Walmart for $10 for some odd reason, and it was the last one. And I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. It's just like, it was like totally... A Gollum Smeagol moment where I'm just like, yes, mine. I gotta lie it! I got to, it's mine! Mm. And it's so beautiful! Richard Armitage, and it's just like. <laughs> Question number five Irish Whiskey. A book that was so bad that you needed a drink. Alright, 
I don't have any books that I feel that bad that would make me really honestly like want to forget it to that point. Um, but I do have one that just kind of irritated me and it took a long time to get through and I probably should have DNF'd it, but I didn't. And that would be... Eon? I think people say Eon. I was calling it Eon, but that's wrong. So, Eon? Eon? By Alice Goodman? Allison Goodman? <sighs> I didn't really like this book. There was literally one character in the book that made me keep going and originally I thought I was going to read the second one just to find out what happens and I decided against it. So, yeah, stick around. It's going to be in my unhauling video. <laughs> yeah, that one. Question number six, Irish Dancing, a book that was so good that it made you want to dance in excitement. So I decided to go with Cinder by Marissa My Mayer, Meyer, darn it, Marissa Meyer, I've been saying it wrong so much, Cinder by Marissa Meyer, Ugh. such a good reread, now I'm rereading Scarlet and I'm just like, you know what, by the time this video is up, I'll be done Scarlet and probably on winter, but I don't care. So good, so good. Question number seven. Ireland, a book that made you travel to a different country. This one was actually pretty easy. First thing that pops into my mind is actually Seeker, and there actually is Ireland in it for one, and they go to all different places throughout it. This is definitely actually a good book. I did enjoy it. I mean, it's not up there like most memorable and things like that, but I didn't have any complaints really about it either. It's just kind of one of those slips below the radar, wasn't big enough to me to get a bunch of hype, but wasn't small enough to me that I'm like, I don't want to ever see it again and I don't like it. I think I'm going to have to reread it. I want to get the second one, which is called Traveler, I think is the second book's name. But it was good. It was good. And the final question, question number eight, the pub. A meeting place in a book that you've always wanted to go. Harry Potter. There is a specific place specifically in this book that when I was reading this series I wanted to go there and I just wanted to see it and I couldn't really imagine it and even in the movies they didn't really give you any emphasis on it so you're just like what is what is going on in this room and I really want to see it. The room of requirements. When that first showed up and everything like that I was just like I want to go in there and see it <laughs> I want to see it so bad and it just yeah so that's the place I've always wanted to go and at that part Neville's in it I love Neville and Luna and Fred and George I love them okay so all that's left is who I tag I will be putting anybody that I tagged in the down bar below and I will be contacting you to let you know that you have been tagged I hope you guys all like this tie, and please like and subscribe. It would mean a whole lot to me. Please. Please. Bye, y'all. Boop, boop, bomb. If my lips ever left my mouth, pack the bag and head it south. That'd be too bad. I'd be so sad. I see that'd be too bad. You'd be so sad. That'd be too bad. If my lips loop to loop, left a mess and took my tooth, that'd be too bad. I might get mad. I see that'd be too bad. You might get mad, that'd be too bad. If my lips said adios, I don't like you, I think you're gross, that'd be too bad. I call my dad. I see that'd be too bad. You call your dad, that'd be too bad. Hold it. Did you say your father? That's interesting. So what you're saying is, if your lips left you, that'd be too bad, I'd be so sad, I might get mad, I call my dad, that'd be too bad, that'd be too bad, you'd be too bad. Hmm, tell me about your childhood. When I was just two years old, I left my lips out in the cold and they turned blue. What could I do? Oh my, well, they turned blue, what could you do? Oh, they turned blue. On the day I got my tooth, I had to kiss my great aunt Ruth, she had a beard, and it felt weird. My, my, she had a beard, and it felt weird, I had a beard. Ten days after I turned it, got my lips caught in a gate. My friends all laughed, and I just stood there until the fire department came and broke the lock with the crowbar and had spent the next six weeks and read the free ad with a kid named Oscar got stung by a bee right on the lips so we couldn't even talk to each other for the first week because both of our lips were so swollen, and when he did speak, he only spoke Polish, so I only knew like three words in Polish, but now I know four because Oscar taught me the word for lip. Usta. Your friends all laughed. Usta. How do you spell that? I don't know. So what you're saying is 
They turn blue, what had I do? She had a beard and it felt weird, my friends all laughed. What the? Um, I'm confused. What are you saying? That I love my lips! Tira da da tira do, 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 tira da da